Good evening. Hello, hi, Angela. Hello, teacher, good evening, how are you? I'm good, excuse me one minute, please. Okay, teacher, no problem. Thank you, hold on. Okay, thank you. How are you? Very well, teacher. My Good. Case. All right. Hi, Claudia. Hello. Claudia, how's your account? How, how's your job? Do you like it? Um, yes, it's been good. Uh, actually, it's self. And First week it was a bit awful because I didn't sell anything. But last week it was okay. Okay. Yes. You, you're starting to sell now. Yes. Hey, good. It feels good, huh? <laughs> yes. All right. What's up, Bert? Hey, hello, sir. Good evening, everybody. Uh he's been it's been okay in my work, but, you know, but the weather is sucks, really sucks. I mean, so almost 40 degrees in the afternoon. It's so horrible. It's it's incredible, yes. When does it start raining? Maybe May. Next month, right? Yeah, next month. The thing is, this is really weird weather because in the morning is 22 or 23 degrees i mean it doesn't make any sense because it's it, for us because look the difference of temperature from 23 degrees to 40 degree to jump and this. maybe maybe that's why people are getting sick that's right i get i i'm feeling sick right now because i think I'm going to have some allergies. Yeah. It's true. By the way, I want to talk about something about my job. We we are doing some, uh, we are trying the artificial intelligence. We are putting all the knowledge. This week, 
we are being trained in that artificial intelligence. I don't know if you heard about chat GPT. No, what is it? Well, it's an artificial intelligence that is a, actually you can chat, but it's a machine that is responding to you, it's answering. It is playing with the natural language or the models, math, mathematical models. So we ain't gonna start working with that because it's, for example, if I want to build a web page or the the landing page, I just say, oh, Chan GPT, I need a web page like this, like that. And the application just build it with the code, HTML code, GA's code, and the CX code to just put the web online. That's interesting. But I think that's yeah. dangerous. That's dangerous to to humanity. Why? Because it's good. It's very good. But in a way, I think it's very bad too, because that will take a lot. A, I mean, in the future, in a far, far future, when this develops, this will take a lot of jobs. I mean, let me give an example. Not artificial, well, maybe a little artificial intelligence, but like, um, which company, Ford Company, I think, they closed down 2,000 or 3,000 jobs. I don't remember. Because now robots do that part. Ford. You mean Ford? Ford. Well, I think it was Ford then, right? Yeah, it was for now. Can you imagine this with IA technology? AI technology, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's good for the company, for the rich people. Like, wow, you can have one person, one application doing what five people will do. <clears throat> well, let me give you an example in the United States, the supermarkets, there are no more cashiers now. In the majority or in the banks now everything is you do it yourself you know with the machine and you know as a user you say hey this is cool this is easy but what about the people who are affected directly so um maybe maybe uh <laughs> terminator was correct in the future there will be a cyber war humanity versus <laughs> artificial intelligence well i totally disagree with you sir because i mm -hmm. think this is just a, a political vision you have about artificial intelligence no 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 i mean i i, and... like I said i think it's good but it will take I'm, all i'm saying is that maybe it will take jobs from other people that's it but yeah but that happened before in the in this happened. revolution no, I understand that. that. 2,000 years ago, 2,200 years ago. And that now where the world had to ha have a revolution. Yeah, the, the evolution continues, but now the evolution is speeding. So, yeah, the, the worst thing that ever happened to humanity is dangerous is continuing right now is religion that's really dangerous because divide the people for this is why the, the main source of the evil the people hate other people and that's a real danger it's true not that artificial intelligence because it will improve the way you touch you get the knowledge so think about it i've been it's been helping me in my work because Sometimes I don't know how to solve a problem because I'm human, but that's a machine solving a problem quickly. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. For you, it's cool. For me, it's cool. But if you generalize, there, there will be a people affected too. I know. There, I there know will be people. Uh -huh, and unfortunately, one side of the people who this will favor, I mean, those people are ready for that, but the other half, those people are not. For example, 
look, look how quick Uber got in El Salvador. I remember, I remember at the beginning, everybody, no, es que yo no puedo, ¿cómo es eso de Uber, Uber, Uber? Now you don't see taxis. And, and too bad for the taxi drivers, you know, all the old people, you know, it's like pobrecitos, man, they, yeah. But you're, you're right, for religions are not, Religions yeah, that's the word. If you review the history, you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna realize that first and the second world war was originated by the religion. I'm not talking about Christianism, I'm not talking about the Islam, it was the Judaism that provoked those two wars. Every, every and war. And you had to dig, you had to dig deeper and you will realize it. Have you noticed that the poorest countries in the world, that La Mapo, the poorest, are the most religious? That's right. Look at the Middle East. Look at Latin America. Look at India. <laughs> There's what even if... worse in the India. Yeah. It's, it's sad. Um, religions limit you. Steve. Who is Steve? I don't know. <laughs> That's new for me. He's, he's new, huh? Maybe he's an agent, artificial agent. <laughs> Whoops, there he's out now. All right. But anyway, I, I'm so glad because I'm learning. And no, but so, you know, I mean, I mean that's interesting. Really I would love to see that. I, and that would be so cool to see. I wonder if I can send you a link to you just try that. Oh, yeah. It's you, easy to use. You know, you read my mind. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, send me the link. That, I will. I, I will. I, I would love to see that. That would be cool. So remember yesterday we were doing about describing cities, right? Um, we, yesterday we we're doing describing cities, but now uh, you tell me about a city in El Salvador without without necessarily the vocabulary. For example, Oloquilta, which is famous for its pupusas, is forty minutes from the airport. Yes, or Los Planes, which is famous for the pupusas. Is also, it has cool weather. Yes? Angelica Lasso, can you give me an example? Hello. Good Hi. evening. Good evening. Mm, let me think. Mm. Any city. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, from El Salvador. It can be any city. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Los Angeles is a very hot city. Okay, no, but um, did you hear my example? Oloquilta, which is famous for its pupusas, is 40 minutes from, its, from the airport. I didn't say in Oloquilta they sell pupusas. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Give me some relative yes. and non-relative. Mm. I said El Salvador because maybe it's easier for you, you know, oh, because you know, but if you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, let me try. Mm. Mm. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Tokyo is the, how, how do you say? Uh, como Ciudad Central o the, Capital. The main city, the capital. Uh, Tokyo is the main city of Japan, which is the most, which, which is, it has the, the which, which it, it has a bigger population. I don't know if, you I see, an, you see, Angelica, excuse me, you are complicating yourself. 
I understand. I understand what you're trying to say, but remember what I'm telling you. Just keep it easy. Keep it simple. You know, like anything, anything is, you know, um, Mexico, which is famous for its tacos, is a big country in North America, example. El Salvador, which was famous for gangs, now is famous for surf or for peace. Do you understand? Yes, I understand, but okay. you I see, but don't yeah, have but, a No, that's why, that's why. But and you know what? Um, when you can't give an example, try to think about things you like. Okay. Things about, like, about things you like or things you know. When, when you talk about things you like and things you know, it feels easier to talk. Okay. Yes? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, let's say, yo, que digo, que digo. Um, I like, I like, like, what do I say? Oh, you know, like, oh, Hollywood, which is famous for movies. It's a very dangerous city. Example, right? Claudia, you can you give me an example? And, and not just a city, give me an example of anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fish soup is delicious, which um, nobody uh, likes. Okay, I would change. Usually. Fish yes. soup, which the majority of people don't like, is very delicious. Yes. Repeat. Fish uh, soup, which is good. The no, majority which, of... which the okay. majority of people don't like. That's, that's the non-relative clause. Okay. Fish soup, which is delicious. No. Leave the fish. is delicious part at the end. Ah, okay. We uh, fish soup, um, which no, nobody usually that uh, likes is delicious. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> fish soup, which people usually don't like, is delicious. Yes. All right. Good. Hey, ¿cómo se llamaba Bert? El que se había entrado. Steve. I think Steve. it's Ronald. It's Steve. Ronald, huh? Ronald, you're Steve, huh? That's my second name, Steve. The first one is Ronald. Oh, okay, that's why. But it's because I got this is my other phone, so I didn't I didn't set the Zoom, so I had to do it once again. And I see, like, excuse me, you have air conditioning in your room. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> it oh. was in my room, but now I am in the terrace next to my sister's room. Okay, I would be in my room with the full air conditioning on right now. <laughs> yeah. All it's right, no cool. good to me because I get cough. Huh? I get cough. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, give me an example, Ronald. Steve, Ron Ronald, Steve. Uh, about what? Uh, give me about anything. Describe something using a non-relative clause and a relative clause. Um, let me see. Mm, I don't remember. Let me see an example. Okay, I'll come back to you so you can listen to more examples. Jonathan, can you give me one? about a place okay i'm sorry class were you listening to the examples i gave the examples claudia gave the examples angelica gave just a curiosity were you listening yes okay claudia i think gave a very good example she said fish soup which many people don't like, that's non-relative, non it's very good. 
Angelica, I think she said, I forgot, she said something about Tokyo and population and no, in my case, no, no, don't say it, please. <laughs> <laughs> or or I said, um, Olokuita, which is famous for, or you know what? I think that I said it wrong, maybe. Olokuita, which is 40 minutes from the airport, is famous for, for um, pupusas. I, I just got an example. All right, cool. Okay, the relative clause is the one which uh, states about the, the important necessary information. So yes, the important one. I would say Haaland, a soccer player, plays for Manchester City. That would be a relative clause because it's necessary information. And a not relative clause could be Haaland, who is 22 years old, plays for uh, Manchester, Manchester City. City. Very yes, good. Yeah. Because it's not necessary to say his mm -hmm. age. Yes, it's just additional information. But the important information is he's a soccer player. He is a beast. <laughs> Have you seen him playing? Yeah, man. He... I would be afraid of. Well, he is scary. <laughs> just looking at him, he is scary. He looks like a like an android. <laughs> they say that that's his nickname, I guess. Yeah, that's his nickname. He's a beast. He's the future of soccer, maybe. All right, Bert, give me an example. What is it? Is it San Miguel? That is the hell on earth. It's an interesting city to visit. <laughs> San Miguel, which is? Ah, with the house on earth. Actually, now it's really hot. Believe me, I want to go out right now because I can't stand the 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 warm. It's so hot. Oh man. Yes, it's hell. It's hell. <laughs> okay, Angela, give me an example. Um, and Tumco Beach, uh, which is one of the best fish. Beaches in El Salvador. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, but remember, Angela, you have to give me two inform two informations. One is essential. One, one is the important, and the other is extra information. So for example, El Tunco is a beach, a beach which is very which is a very big tourist attraction okay so in this case what is the essential el tunco is a beach extra information which is is one is in the salvador uh, wait beach. wait i'm sorry <laughs> yeah that's, I'm sorry. Angela, si, para usted que es más importante si me quiere decir el tunco. El tunco es una playa o el tunco es eh, un punto turístico grande. Eh, de, que es una de las mejores. <laughs> Mencionando de todas las playas, una de las mejores. Ok, se quiere, se va a complicar entonces. <laughs> ok. <laughs> ok, porque me lo va a tener que decir en inglés. And the Tunco Beach is one of the, the best beaches in the El Salvador. Good, but you're giving me a description. I need an essential and non-essential information. Okay. O sea, no le dije, dígame qué es el Tunco. No, me tiene que dar algo importante del Tunco y algo adicional. Oiga, se lo voy a decir en español para que vean la idea. El Tunco es una playa ¿Cómo es en español? ¿Cuál es? La cual es un punto turístico grande en El Salvador. O el Tunco que es un punto turístico grande en El Salvador 
Es una playa. Ahí está en usted. ¿Qué, ¿A qué le queda más importancia al Tunco? Si es un punto turístico o si es una playa. Punto turístico. Ok. Ok, so el Tunco, which is a beach, is a big tourist attraction in El Salvador. It's a big tourist is what? <laughs> El Tunco, el Tunco huh? which is a beach, which is a beach, it's uh, a big tourist attraction. A big tourist attraction in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jonathan, okay. sorry. My cell phone, which fell from my hands, it's broken. Okay, my cell phone, which what from your hand? Which fell mm -hmm. from my hands. Oh, yeah. It's oh. broken. Oh, man. Really? Yes. But that hurts. It, but but is, is my cell phone from my work? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> Barcelona, which is from Spain, is my favorite soccer team. Good example. <laughs> so what what for me what was important in that sentence? Is your favorite it's soccer my, team? It's my favorite soccer team. Yeah, similar to Ronald's Holland. Oh, like Bert, our conversation today, the beginning of the class, IA, which is controversial, is very interesting in this moment. Yeah. You know, um, boy, okay, so let's do the next. Let's do the listening. Let me share my screen with you. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Listen to Carlos and Vicky Can talk about San Francisco. Who seems to like this yes. city yes. better? Okay. Hi guys. Yes. Hi. Hi. Thanks for agreeing to meet me here on such short notice. No problem. Well, listen, as I said to you on the phone, I'm doing a story for a magazine. I'm interviewing foreign students to get their impressions of different cities in America. Uh, well, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I tape record our interview? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, then. Carlos, why don't we start with you? What do you think of San Francisco? How do you like it here so far? It's okay, I guess. Oh, you don't sound very enthusiastic. No, no, I like it. It's just that I've been so busy studying. I haven't had much time to explore the city. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and when I have the time, well, it's so cloudy and foggy here, especially in the summer. I never thought I'd be wearing a sweater in July. Well, this is Northern California. Hey, maybe you should move south. I hear Los Angeles is warmer. Vicky? Oh, I love it here. I think this is a beautiful city. The rolling hills, the views of the bay, it's very romantic. Yeah. So, how do you guys spend your free time? Well, I'm studying architecture and I'm somewhat of a photographer. Really? Oh, I'm just an amateur. Anyway, I, I'm always taking pictures of the buildings in the city. You know, the Victorians, the modern skyscrapers downtown. There's such a variety of buildings in the city. The architecture is really great. I've also taken pictures of other landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks totally different when the weather changes. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, well, Vicky, it's your turn. What do you like to do? I'm a bit of a night person. There's always a new club or a film or a great outdoor cafe to check out with my friends. 
And we also like to explore the different neighborhoods. It's pretty easy thanks to BART. That's Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah, that's a great subway system. Anyway, yesterday we went to the Italian neighborhood, North Beach, to buy some pastries and have a cup of espresso. Today, I'm going down to the Mission District to get a burrito for lunch. Hey, sounds like you like to eat Mexican food. Yes, and actually, I like the Mission a lot. It's a Latino neighborhood. We don't have anything like that where I come from. Uh, well, that's about it. Any final comments? No, not really. I'd just like to say that this is a great place to live. I'm glad that I got a chance to study here. Who likes the city better, Carlos or Vicky? Vicky. Vicky. Instructions, listen again and type in the city features that Carlos and Vicky mentioned. Do you remember the features? I remember foggy and, and cloudy. Oops, foggy is with two. Who likes to take pictures of different places? Carlos. Who is more like a night person? Thank you. Who says that San Francisco is a great place to live? Vicky. In this moment, I would not like to live in the United States. With you, I would like to get there by just for working perhaps six months or a year so I can save a considerable amount and not sure buy my my own I mean purchase my own and get my own gym at my house. Okay, cool. No, no, I'm, yeah, but I meant like, I wouldn't like to live in the United States right now because I think it's very dangerous. Um, you don't know if maybe you're eating in a McDonald's and somebody's going to come in and just start killing people. You know, um, would you feel is safer here? Yes, but. It's safer. Well, yeah, now it's more safer than, than before, but even when we had Mareros here, <laughs> I mean, in El Salvador, if somebody kills you, it's because something happened. <laughs> like, but in the United States, they're really killing for pleasure. Like, you know, in the United States, they kill you, then they eat you, or or I don't know. <laughs> You know, in a school, I, I never heard that in El Salvador, a, a child goes into school and just starts killing all his friends and, and the teachers, you know. But people here get killed just by political preference or no, soccer people, preferences. No, but that's because it's, it's for soccer preference. See. I mean, you could. How get, many people did you did you know that got killed for soccer? I mean, that that that's I think that's something. That's something that's like saying women get killed here because their men are jealous. That happens everywhere in the world. Uh, but let, I invite you to visit the the Sayokuska plan with a different jersey than the Alianza's one. So uh, let me know that you won't you won't get hit. Okay, hit or killed. Hit or killed because 
I mean, people get killed, but because they're stupid. I mean, if if I'm going to go watch Alianza with an Aguila shirt, I know, I know that I am looking for trouble. You know, mm. it's like it's like here going into, I don't know, uh, <laughs> la can la campanera with with gold around you. It's like saying, "Hey, come take my set." You know. No, but I no, I understand that. But that's called violence. That's 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 like stupidity. But what I'm saying is like some other type of violence, you know, like uh, like a vegan, un vegano. He hates people because they eat animals. So what do they do? They go into a restaurant like La Pampa Argentina here because everybody eats meat and they put a bomb. They, they throw a bomb and they kill 50 people in the restaurant because they eat animals and poor animals. That, that's crazy. <laughs> yes, that's worse. Yeah. You know, and, and you can't expect that, you know. like Maybe we it, go back to the previous exercise because I saw the, the second answer was wrong. Oh, yeah? What was it? About the features. Yeah, it was wrong. Oh, it was? The features is wrong. The features? Yes, it was wrong. Uh-oh. What were the features? I said... The feature of the city. Yes, I said foggy and cloudy because Carlos said that, but I'm not sure which is the correct answer. What happened? I lost it. Hold on, I'm sorry, I lost, I lost the, okay, here we go, Is the number three, that five. Yeah, you are in the, sec in the, in the second one, the section two. You said 3.5, right? Yes, that one. What were the features? Climate, architecture, landmarks, nightlife, cuisine. <laughs> Do you know what features are? I knew it was like the characteristics. Yes, the features. Features is like, hey, I'm selling a phone. Do you want one? And you say, what are the features? Oh, it has a 40 megapixel camera. It has eight megabytes of RAM. It has this. And that. Those are features. Like, you know, um, si en español le venden un, un, un amigo, le quiere vender un teléfono y te vendo un, I don't know, Samsung. I hate Samsung porque tienen tantos modelos, man. A20, el A20A, va A20S, el A21. Y es like, what the hell? ¿Por qué no van en orden? A veces el A2 es mejor que el A20. El A1 es, es I don't know. So, what do you do? Características del A20. In English, you would say Samsung A20 features. If you say it in English. A hey, class, remind me, I will teach you a word today after, uh, before we finish class. Okay. Does everybody understand features? Yes. Essential. Yes, teacher. Essential, non-essential. Okay, I'll take it as a yes. Let's listen to this. Let's continue talking about places. I think Antigua Guatemala is a pintoresque, a small old town with an incredible history.
Order of modifiers. We will begin this lesson by reminding you about adjectives. What are adjectives? Adjectives are words that describe or tell about nouns or pronouns. They make sentences more interesting. They give details that make your meaning clearer. They tell what kind or how many. Now, when two or more adjectives modify a noun, they must follow a particular order. Adjectives or modifiers follow this particular order. Opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, purpose, and the noun. Let's talk about each one. Opinion. An opinion adjective explains what you think about something. Often people may not agree with you. Examples, silly, beautiful, horrible, difficult. Size. A size adjective, of course, tells you how big or small something is. Examples, large, tiny, enormous, little. Age. An age adjective tells us how young or old something or someone is. Examples, ancient, new, young, old. Shape. A shape adjective describes the shape of something. Examples, square, round, flat, rectangular. A color adjective, of course, describes the color of something. Examples, blue, pink, reddish, gray. Origin. An origin adjective describes where something comes from. Example, French, lunar, American, Eastern, Greek. Material. A material adjective describes what something is made from. Examples, wooden, metal, cotton, paper. Purpose. A purpose adjective describes what something is used for. These adjectives often end up with ing. Examples, a sleeping, as in sleeping bag. Roasting, as in roasting tin. And then the noun. The noun, the figure that is receiving the adjectives. Now, take a look at some examples of sentences using adjective order. Silly young English man. Huge round metal bowl. Small red sleeping bag. Old green wicked witch. Now that you know about modifiers, try to write a couple of sentences using a... So listen, in conclusion, an adjective describes, correct? So mm -hmm. um, you can use two adjectives. For example, um, El Salvador is a hot, small Central American country. Yes, or you can just say one adjective. All right. Can you give me an adjective for pupusas, Angelica? An adjective? Yes. Pupusas are very delicious. Okay, they're very delicious. What is the adjective? They're delicious. Good. Jonathan, give me an adjective for um, do you watch movies? Yes. Uh, give me an adjective for, let me see what's a good movie. Science fiction. Okay, give me, give, give me an adjective of your favorite science fiction movie. The Matrix is a, it's a fantastic movie. Okay, good. Did you watch Mario Brothers? Oh, Angelica, you watched it, right? No. Yes, me. You were, you were telling me it was good, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Claudia, you don't describe your boyfriend. Mm, he's 
smart. Okay. Yeah. That's it, he is smart. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like, he is a very sweet, gentle person or something. <laughs> oh yeah, but you've been together 10 years, correct? Nah, almost nine. Almost nine, oh, that's why. <laughs> Describe your boyfriend, oh, he's smart. <laughs> Jesus. You love your name, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, sir. Stop <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Bert. Describe um, describe artificial intelligence. Oh, well, I think the word is interactive, um, productive uh destructive <laughs> uh, not dangerous not dangerous <laughs> okay good it could be dangerous if it gets into the wrong people all right cool angela Descri describe el salvador El Salvador is a country very, very um, hot <laughs> and very, very um, uh, it's a um, country um, with a lot of um, beach. That's it. No, okay, no. Uh, yeah, it was just an adjective. El Salvador is a very hot country. Hot okay. is the adjective. Okay. All right, good. Listen, this is something very interesting because um, class, when I teach, when I teach TOEIC, sometimes something is easy is very complicated. Like, for example, I, I tell my class, okay, Claudia, you are from... Mexico, Bert, you are from Brazil. Jonathan, you are from um, Argentina. Angelica, you know, and, and, and you do that, right? And then, and then, like, Ronald, you're from El Salvador. And, you know, it's easy. Okay, I'm from Mexico, I am from Brazil, I am from Argentina, I am from El Salvador. So I tell you, Ronald, Ronald, so imagine I am from Africa. I don't know El Salvador. And I don't know what a pupusa is. What is a pupusa? It's like a tortilla with beans and cheese. Okay. Okay. Now, but think about one thing, Ronald. I don't know anything so when you say a tortilla with beans and cheese what comes to my mind is a tortilla beans and cheese this is what you described to me so oh okay that's a pupusa so in a plate i put a tortilla beans and cheese we eat that in africa too no it's like uh, no, you no I, yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> you know, and then, and then that's when my toy class queda, hey, wait a minute. ¿Cómo lo describo entonces? Y después me terminan haciendo esto. Um, y, y se traban. They can't explain a tortilla, a, a pupusa. And really, it sounds easy, but it's a little difficult. So that's a good way for you to practice English. Try to describe something easy. But you have to use your imagination. It's like when you describe something to a baby. When you describe something to a baby, you are very creative. You use your imagination, correct? You use your hands, you say. Miraba the el pájaro, the bird, the bird. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Who can describe a, a, a pupusa for me? Uh, 
describe don't tell me the process of how to make it just like simply like simple how, how do you describe a pupusa it's a it's like a circle between the circle there is there are beans and cheese and later first you make the the little bowl and smash there is a circle between there there is cheese and beans okay yes and what do you make the circle from uh with your hands and the circle yes. is made from what chocolate with, uh, corn <laughs> with corn corn are you sure mm, yes corn or rice um i forget the word knowing mm. water right we, no, we Ronald, water. Ronald, you said the word. How do you dough say masa? Is, dough is used like for money too, dough. I guess. Dough, yes. Dough. Dough, dough. 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 Uh, with dough, uh, rice or corn. Okay, good. So, good, good. Thank you, Claudia. You're getting the idea. So, a pupusa is corn or rice dough. Now you told me something about in the middle. Now I gave una palabra, se llama stuffed. Let me put that on my chat. Eso es relleno, ¿verdad? Yeah, hold on. Hey, I think we're gonna pizza, like how cool. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, teacher. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> Here, let me close. Now I'm going to chat. Where the hell's the chat? Okay. Stuffed. Stuffed. Bueno, un oso de peluche. ¿Cómo se dice oso de peluche? Stuffed bear. Stuffed animal. So, stuffed is when you get something and you stuff it in. Yes? So, we can put a little of what Ronald said, a little of what Claudia said. So, what is a pupusa? Oh, okay. It's like a tortilla. Porque eso sí, todo el mundo sabe que una tortilla. But just in case they don't know what a tortilla is, then we go to what Claudia said. Oh, okay, a tortilla is, is made from dough. Pero let's, let's keep it more simple. So like what Ronald said. So a pupusa is like a tortilla, but it's, it is stuffed with beans and cheese and pork. It's whatever you like. That's the traditional. But now you can stuff the pupusa with anything you like. If you want to put chicken, if you want to put, but it always has cheese. <laughs> you know, so, so now I am from Africa. Oh, okay. Now I have the idea because I get a tortilla that is stuffed. Because if you say it's similar to a tortilla with beans and cheese, I, I am thinking separately. Le voy a dar un perfecto ejemplo, pan con pavo. What did you eat for, for, for Christmas? Oh, bread with turkey. Todo el mundo eats a bread with turkey. So what comes to my mind? Bread and turkey. What is a pan con pavo? It's really a sandwich. But it's a Salvadorian sandwich. Yeah. So if you if you ask me, imagine you want to learn about my culture. In Christmas, we eat pan con pavo. Pan con pavo is a Salvadorian sandwich. It's a big piece of bread. 
and turkey in the middle with turkey, a, a real turkey, no ham, <laughs> turkey. Oh, so it's a Salvadorian sandwich. Do you know the story of sandwich? Many, many people ask me, teacher, por qué sandwich? Sand de arena. Y which is cual? Ah. <laughs> Actually, the story of sandwich, era un duque, duke of sandwich. And the duke, he was addicted to casino, like to table games. Do you know what are table games? Dominoes, poker, etc. So one day, in his mansion or castillo or a castle, he invited all the people and they were playing. And it was good, the game was good, but it was time to eat. So he told his people, hey, make something to eat, but we don't want to stop playing. He says, what? You know, well, what should I make? Put ham between bread. And we will eat here in the table. So it says the staff, they invented that. They, you know, they put ham in bread so they can eat with their fingers because they wanted to continue playing. And everybody loved the idea. Sandwich. They put it on sandwich. En honor a sandwich. Interesting, huh? So, entonces, por eso, pan con pavo is a Salvadorian sandwich. Un pan migueleño. Okay, that's something very interesting, too, to learn the origin of words. Do you know, todos han oído la palabra fuck, correct? Sí, dije una mala palabra, pero la voy a explicar. Please don't be offended. You heard the word fuck, correct? Do you know where fuck comes from? Um, I need. Yeah, okay. Maybe you're not listening to me. Okay, class, then I will see you tomorrow. Okay. What, what was the word you were going to teach us? It was that. I was actually, I wanted to teach you where words come from, but I don't know if you're listening to me. I am, I am, I am, speaking, to I am speaking to six people. In, okay. en los tiempos medievales, you know, like I think Bert was telling me, the world is always on war. Yes, Europa siempre estuvo en guerra. So imagine, Ronald, you're married, but your king declared war to France, example. So, Ronald, you have to go and fight. Tempo medieval. Medieval time. And what happened? Ronald never returned. So what happens to his wife? His wife, what happens? She has to wait. And remember, women can't work. Women obey men. Amen. No, obey. You know the history, right? Um, they used to obey men. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it's something stupid, but so what happened to Ronald's, to Ronald's wife? She needs money. Imagine she has family, she needs to eat, but she's married. So after certain time passes, Ronald's wife starts a new life with another man, correct? Because Ronald never returned. The and do you know how, how long they had to wait? That's a good question. I don't know. 
Okay. But the history says that because she was married and they don't know if Ronald is dead or not because Ronald maybe is a hostage, Lieutenant prisoner. So the wife, she, she had to go ask permission to the king. Array, permission. And says, King, my, my husband never returned. It's been six months, one year, I don't know, whatever time. He never returned, and I want to get married again, but I am married. So, eso es fornication, porque ella aún está married. <laughs> but in this exception, the king said, okay, and he gives her a pass, and the pass says, fuck. Is fornication under consentment of king. So the origin is not a bad word. Today is a bad, it's a bad word. <laughs> but really, it's, it, that means that that woman is fornicating, pero bajo consentimiento de ley, because his, her husband never returned. What was the meaning of the C? Consentment. Consentment. Fornicación bajo consentimiento de ley. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Yeah. So please don't think. Hey, que aprendieron ahí. Oh, fuck. Aprendimos a decir fuck. No. It's, <laughs> it's cultural. It's popular culture. So, I don't need so okay. Yes. By the way, I mean, I mean, thinking about this similar work when you go into the beach. I mean, it, why is has different meaning in English than Spanish? In, because in English, I think I, I heard that it necessarily means for, but like a female adult, is that true? Bitch, bitch is really not a bad word. In fact, you can find the word bitch in the dictionary. Bitch is a female dog. The description is a female dog, but you know, people now. They relate that, I don't know, to fornication, to a prostitute. Saben de donde viene la palabra drag? You know what is a drag queen? No. Yes. Drag. No. A drag. Drag. You know, like those men that dress like women? They, some of them appear in, the, in this movie from Disney. The, the, in Spanish, it's abra, abra cadabra, but the sec, uh, not sure what is the name in, in, in English, but some drag, drag queens appear in that movie. Okay, good. Yeah, so drag queens is men that dress like women, but very... Aquí hay uno famoso, por cierto, que es de la oposición. Lady, Lady Kelly. Lady Drag. Lady drag, well, okay, drag. And the reason why drag, la palabra drag, viene de Shakespeare. Cuando hacían los actos, por ejemplo, Romeo and Juliet en, en el teatro, lastimosamente las mujeres siempre han sido marginadas en todo, en la historia. Ya, yeah? entonces las mujeres no podían actuar. Entonces la parte de una mujer la tenía que hacer un hombre. Y ahí viene la palabra drag, D-R-A-G. Dress arranged for gentlemen. Vestido arreglado para un caballero. Porque el hombre se tenía que vestir mujer. Hoy la comunidad... LGBTQXSD la tomó ya con drag queen. Queer. Yes. Queer, yes, everything. Do you know where the word okay comes from? Yeah, no, this is mean like happy, joy, 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 joy. Okay. 
Okay, but do you know the origin? I mean, somebody that is always happy or joy. Okay. Yeah, okay is good. It's something zero, good. Zero kills. Zero killed. Like, for example, imagine Jesus. Imagine there's a war. I am, I am, I don't know, the captain of San Salvador and you're the captain of San Miguel. Remember, in that time, there was no communication. So my communication was the messenger. So I sent my messenger and I put, Albert, how are you? Give the letter to the messenger, by messenger. You know, and when the messenger receives, Albert, do you know this? I am okay. Zero killed. En la batalla hubieron cero muertos. And that was good news. Yes. Imagine here, oh my God, it's so not the batalla. You know, Claudia, she's the captain. How are you? And I am okay. So zero killed. So everybody is alive. That's where the word okay comes from. Y el último que le voy a enseñar hoy es SOS. SOS. What is SOS? It's even in Spanish. Huh? Save, our, save our life. A soul. Pero ¿sabes de dónde viene? I think I'm from French. Ah, no, that, that's the other one. Mayday, Mayday. May this May is the... No, but SOS. Yeah, yeah, but this is... What is SOS? It's help. It's a sign for help. Uh -huh. Many people, many people believe it comes from the Titanic. Porque ese era el código Morse que mandaban SOS, SOS. Now there's two possible. Save our ship or save our soul. Pero obviamente was help. You know, because it was very repetitive. SOS, SOS, SOS. So many people say, okay, it, yes, it's the international code for help, but it's save our souls or save our ship. Yeah. Okay, class. Thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a wonderful okay. Tuesday. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you, Bye. teacher. Bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.